It's Bill from Canadian Breed and I'm going to show you and demonstrate to you how I make a bone nut. This will be, um, the bone nut that I do for this will go on to Jacques McKenzie's guitar. So that'll be the uh, guinea pig. Anyways, this is a shin bone off of beef cattle and it cost me about uh, $2 I would say. And there's enough here to go for quite a while, a good year's worth anyways, unless I make a lot of mistakes. And this is a really condensed bone because it's in the shin bone and the majority of the weight of the animal is at that lower part of the leg you're gonna get a nice condensed and uh, solid piece of bone as opposed to a porous bone that you'll sometimes see where you can actually see down the uh, the pore of the uh, the bone uh, this bone here will not be bleached I usually uh, leave that alone and just keep it as its natural color and it ends up being a nice off-white uh, finish so there's no extra bleaching that I do. Um, as you can see I've already begun uh, using this section which I'll use and we'll just use the bandsaw to cut the uh, portion that I need and begin to shape it with my bandsaw and get it ready and prepped for the uh, fingerboard. Okay, so we have a successful blank. Uh, it's definitely thicker than an eighth of an inch. Gives me a lot of room to work with to uh, get it nicely sanded both front and back and get my arch or arc on the top and my width with the uh, my belt sander. And so the next step we'll start uh, using my belt sander to get it ready. Alright, so I'm just trying to use my belt sander to get a nice true surface and I want to get it nice and parallel as well. And I leave enough material so that I can uh, slowly work my way to it. You can see here how it's uh, not quite there yet. One thing I could probably do is use double-sided tape and put a little holder uh, handle on it so I don't get my fingertips too close, but just for demonstrational purposes, I'm just showing you it this way right now. You can also see that there's a uh, bit of flare happening there too. It's not uh, perfectly parallel from face to face, so that'll have to be addressed. So, I'm just going to carry on, turn off the uh, camera, and keep working it to the next step, which will be getting it ready to fit the uh, slot. Alright, so I have my blank all ready to go into my slot here, just for testing. And she's good and snug. And I'll probably have to take a little bit out in the trouble side, just a little bit. But now I can go ahead and mark my uh, width here. And I can get sizing it as well. And I'll just actually just kind of get a preliminary idea of what my arc is going to be. I'll get me close. And I'll take that over and I will do a uh, proper fitting and then get ready to uh, cut the slots. All right, so we have the nut blank sitting nicely snug in the slot. It's an eighth of an inch wide by about three thirty seconds deep. And the bottom is nicely uh, running along the bottom edge of the machine groove and you can also see a little bit of a 
issue with my finishing there where the tape didn't cover the fingerboard. I'll need to clean that up a little bit. You see a little bit of a tape line there. I'll get that taken care of as well. There's Jacques. This is Jacques' guitar by the way. And um, next step is doing the actual slotting of the marking up and slotting the uh, nut. I've got my trusty little nut spacing uh, drawing here that I used to mark up my uh, bow nut and with my pencil I'll just go along mark my centers like so and it looks like my B string is just slightly off and so I'll need to remark that one this drawing came off of uh, the TDPRI website and I think it was Scatter Lee or no J Dog J A Y D A W G is his uh, username and uh, he supplied this drawing and so I think we're good to go there now I think that's a little better now it looks like the uh, G string is a little bit out Let's just redo that one. So you can get this in PDF form for yourself. It's readily available. You don't have to pay for it. The guys on the uh, tele forum are really good for donating prints and all kinds of... I'm making a mess of that one. I'll have to redo that one. They're pretty good at uh, offering free stuff anyways. I actually took off the uh, D string, so I'll have to do that one again. This is kind of critical because you want the spacing to feel natural. You don't want strings to be too close and then too far apart from what you're typically used to, and your fingers will feel that difference. So I think we're good there. And from here I'll get uh, my uh, fret files and we will begin to slot the uh, nut. Alright guys, here are the fret files all ready to go for this set of strings. They're the uh, 10 gauge. And we have our 10, our 13, our 16, 26, 36, and 46. The most common ones that I use. I got these from Philadelphia Luthier Tools. At the time I think I paid $90 for the set because there was a promotional code with that and I ordered it through their website which was cheaper than their eBay site so if you're looking for a set of uh, files check them out they're really good they also carry a lot of other stuff and I also have a preset uh, of uh, feeler gauges that I use for my string height over the first fret uh, I do steps of 10 or 2 thou starting at where is it here starting at 10 anyways it's in there there we go 10 12 14 16 18 20 being the low E, so that gives me really nice and uh, comfortable uh, action on the neck. And we'll get started uh, slotting the um, nut. Alright, so I have a uh, my 10 thou file, the thinnest one, and I'll do my initial marking. I use my uh, index finger of my right hand to kind of hold it in place. Same way you would with a miter box, so it kind of becomes my miter box. Kind of work off the corner and then I go across the top to start because I'll be going over it later on with uh, wider files, of course. And I'm not too concerned if I'm a little bit off because I can always tweak it with the uh, file as I go deeper in the slot. I'm probably a little higher than I should be above where the strings are going to should be so I have a lot of room to work with it's a very very flimsy uh, file so you have to be careful because you could easily break it okay so I have our nut basically started here you can sort of see the uh, slots what I do is I, I didn't mention it but I'll run all the slots with the 10 and then I'll go to the 13 at the B and I'll do all the rest, last five in the 13 and I'll continue on 
till I end up with the last one, the 46 for the low E, and uh, instead of jumping from a 10 to the 36 or 46 where it could wander, I just slowly gradually work my way up through the files. And uh, we'll be almost ready to string up the guitar and start uh, setting the height for this thing. Okay, so as you can see, the next stage after uh, sliding the uh, slots or following the slots, I string it up and just check my height. Then we're way up, of course. Here I got a 60 thou Dunlop pick, and we got a good bit of room there. So, what I'm going to probably do is take it out of the bottom, easier that way, of the, uh, the nut, and then I'll tweak it and work my way down to uh, an acceptable height before I go too far and then I'll just uh, use the uh, file files to uh, finalize my uh, depths here and yes I did plug it in and yes it sounds incredible even though it's not intonated or set with for height or anything it's uh, very cool so there we go I will get that ready to go and from here on we're uh, into the home stretch all right, so I uh, took some material out of the bottom of the nut so it dropped down without me having to redo more depth to these slots because they were looking pretty good initially. Uh, the low E string needed to be dropped down a little bit, so all I do, I've already done it, but I'll just show you now. All I do is I run my uh, file in here on an angle towards my post where I know the string is going to hit that. I want a nice straight a ramp down I don't want it to be curved in any way so I make sure I draw my file back in a nice straight motion I do that with all of them this one will be getting a uh, obviously string uh, retainers here and I may have to do one in the uh, the D and the G as well just because of the way that these locking tuners work they don't uh, I know I started to wrap the strings here but you're really only supposed to put them through the post and use the back uh, button to tighten them up and then you uh, spin your tuner to tighten so uh, next step now is I'm going to buff them all up with my micro mesh pads 1500 to 12,000 grit and then they can be glued in alright so we're into the final stages of this nut experience and uh, I have this um, set of micro mesh 5 inch uh, orbital sanding discs that I use to do this with as I said before, there are 1500 uh, grit go up to 12,000, so I get a nice glass finish with these. And I'm just going to work my way through them. Here I've started with the 15 and I've hit, the, hit it with the 18. And I'll move up on through the grits and we'll see what it looks like at the end. So here is the finished installed nut, polished. Kind of hard to get a shot of that, but it's been polished. Glass finish, and we have our heights all set. Spacing's good feels really comfortable to play. So next video we shall see the completed guitar in its demo. We'll see you then.